Welcome back to Late Nights with All Access. Myself, Mike Anthony, and our co-hosts, my co-hosts, are actually out for the night. So it's been a it's been a minute since I've been 
on the show by myself with a special guest. Uh, but I do have a good friend next to me, which is our guest, Nick Monroe. So thank you for being here tonight with us. Uh, and so we are actually uh, inside of Alamo Business Company. So shout out to John Vell for allowing us to go ahead and be here. It's our sponsor location. And it's been a minute since I've actually like get to sit down and talk to you. But I see you by passing here and there, and I'm excited to have you because of the big buzz with the mural that you're doing outside of this beautiful uh, venue. So we're excited to have you, man. Uh, first off, you're not alone. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. And it's, uh, it's a privilege to be here. Thanks for having me. No, you know what? For the, everyone that's uh, tuning in and watching, uh, I've known Nick for over a decade now. And it's been amazing, you know, to see. I love seeing how friends progress in life and just different things. And also learning about your friends that, you know, maybe you didn't know something about them. And then all of a sudden you learn something about them that you never knew. Uh, and, and before we get into your artwork, because that was one of the things that I have learned about you is that you're just a very, very, very talented and gifted uh, artist. You. And, and you have an eye for it and you're really good it, it's, it's just amazing and so but before we get into that uh shout out to nat boogie tonight is her birthday so Happy birthday. we had lunch at coastal pacifica Yum. so that was really delicious mexican seafood so if you haven't been go uh, check them out they're in the stone oak area and this past weekend it was saint patrick's day then on Saturday was my grandmother's birthday, so happy birthday to her. Uh, and birthday. then Sunday, uh, we had Nat Boogie's brunch party, which was at Culture. And it's a, uh, uh, it's a, one of the newest fine dining restaurants that has a twist of the nightclub in there. So if you could think of, uh, I'm trying to think of a, of a place. Uh, STK's, uh, thinking like uh, something like that in, in Vegas, uh -huh. mm -hmm. something like that, which is here in San Antonio. So really delicious food, real good where vibes is, and everything. That and that's in the Stone Oak area. Okay. So uh, shout out to the guys over there. Uh, they did an incredible job for their brunch. But um, how was your weekend? What did you have going on throughout that whole? Oh, man, it's been so hectic lately. I don't even know what day it is most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, get up and go. So, man, I can't tell you. What, what did I do this weekend? Um, I spent a lot of time with my family recently. I can tell you what I did last weekend. Uh -huh. So I went up and hung out with the fam up in Austin, stayed up at my brother's place, visited the folks, went and watched my niece play some volleyball. Um, yeah, just kicking it with the fam. Um, and then coming back into town, just dedicating most of my time to the installation of the mural out here outside. Okay, nice. Which has been tough with the weather. So you can predict most things, but the weather, as you know, in San Antonio is pretty bipolar. So it is of, bipolar. Yeah. So just waiting out the rain, uh, getting uh, getting the paint on when I can, and uh, you know, recently I was doing a commission for uh, Texas True Tax. Um, they just launched their uh, new business tonight, so shout out to Ann Englert for... Uh, shout out to Ann. Yeah. For Congratulations. Her, for her uh, attempts of breaking out of job jail and starting her own business, and, and uh, that's super exciting. So I spent some time doing an uh, uh, art commission for her and her company, and it was really neat because um, at her event tonight... Uh, you know, we're able to, to take that art piece and then uh, recreate it in uh, some prints. So on some cold press paper, mm -hmm. turned out really nice. You got one right I here. I have one right here, y'all. And we're able to circulate those and number them. So it was a great idea. It was a great uh, launch to her company. And uh, yeah, everyone that showed up got some uh, original art from yours truly. And I got one too, y'all. So I'm excited about that. I'm very, very excited about that. And... and you know, it, it, again, congratulations on her because starting a business can be overwhelming and, 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 you know, taking that leap of faith. But it's always good to move forward as well as fail forward. But it, it's just amazing to see people do that. So congratulations to Ann uh, once again. Absolutely. And the company is called Texas True Tax, y'all. So it is tax season, right? 
Yeah, well, uh, their specialty is property tax. Property taxes, there you go. So, um, you know, taxes are going up. Money's, uh, I guess, losing its value as of lately. So um, if you have any questions or concerns, reach out to her or contact me, and, and I'll put you in touch with her. That's good. It's, it's always good. I love seeing people network, you know. Networking, yeah, that's what it's all about. It, it is key. So over the weekend, uh, I... I want to give a shout out to John Morales. He's one of the managers for Glazers. Mm -hmm. They actually rented out my party bus on Friday and for seven hours. So we went to so many different bars that day and it was just a good group of people in there. I saw a few different bars that I haven't seen in, in since they've opened. Uh, one of them is called McIntyre. Have you heard yeah, of that that's bar? Over South so Town. South Town. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was able to, I didn't go inside because I'm driving my party bus, but I was able to at least see the outside of it. So it was pretty cool to see it, you window know, shopping. so yes, window shopping at the bars, basically. Uh, so it was uh, really nice to, uh, to see that bar finally, because I always hear great things about it. So that's like a Houston based. Entity. Yes, yeah. it is absolutely Houston based. So it's pretty neat. It's kind of like outdoorsy type of vibe. So. Yeah, and you know what? I noticed that that's a lot of the newest bars are now getting to that trend to where it's an outside inside bar so that people have an option to either go inside or outside. And I think it has to do with a lot of the, the fact of what we went through in 2020 and it, people feel safe now being outside, having a beer and some burgers or whatever they're yeah. having. Or, you know, Night at the Roxbury was a little ahead of its time. That is so true. <laughs> Could be the case. That that could be the case. I think that probably is the case. You know what's so funny is that we were talking over lunch today, uh, and we were talking about there was a bar, the bar after uh, it's on Blanco and sixteen oh four, it's El Marisol right now. But before it, that, it was something else. Oh yeah. And then it was uh, I think it was originally Huli Hands or Huli Hands yeah, or Huli Hands for a minute. But then, then it, was it was something, something else, else, and they try to do the outside theme inside oh, i don't know so because we went in there once before and you think of you imagine chicken and pickle or imagine you know mcintyre or imagine you know one of these outdoor venues but instead of it being outside all of it was inside so yeah. it was just like one of those things that made yeah. me think of that movie so yeah. it's funny that you say that outside but it's no longer story. there anymore because el mari soul's there yeah, so. see if they can break the uh, the curse. You uh, know, do you believe in that stuff? When there's you a see? couple spots around San Antonio that I've always just turned over and turn. You think the location's good, but it's just always nothing. Nothing ever seems to stick. Have you? Uh, so we uh, yesterday, I went to uh, the CBC Men's Conference, and Nicola Hood was the guest speaker. What so uh, CBC? Uh, CBC oh. uh, Community Bible Church. Okay. Uh, nice. And so there was a men's uh, conference over there, and he was one of the guest speakers. It's a uh, Rebels Night, and all men come together and you know listen to the keynote speaker, which was Nicola Hood. But on my way over there where Stone Street Pub was, the second location, not the original location off of Hebner and Bitters, mm -hmm. but that building, I think, is cursed because I've seen that go changing like crazy, and now it's a Mexican restaurant. So I wonder and I hope, I don't wish anyone to fail, so whoever has that restaurant, I really hope it works out for you because yeah, I've, yeah. Seen, I've seen, just like you said, there's some places that seem like they're cursed. It's, I don't know what it is. It's like a anti anti vortex point, yeah, of some sort. It is, and then um, over the weekend, uh, my grandmother's birthday, like I was saying, and I love her to death. I'm so blessed to have her alive still. And you know, we had a party bus run during the day with the quinceanera, and then in the evening, uh, I was gonna have another bus run, but it was I was glad that the guys that actually were going to rent out the bus said that they wanted to go ahead and reschedule, so it gave me time to go spend a few hours with my grandmother which was amazing because it's her birthday and I wanted to make sure that I had, you know, not yeah. make it too short for her uh, a visit, but soak in really, that time. Soak in the time. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And it was just amazing. Just, she cracks me up a lot. If you follow me, you'll see videos of her here and there. And I catch her off guard sometimes recording her when she doesn't know it. And she just talks a lot of shit sometimes. And it's just funny because I think when you're getting that certain age, you can say whatever you want and be okay with it. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, if you've earned it, right? Right of passage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And and then uh, Sunday we went to the the uh, XFL game, the Brahmas. Oh, how do you how say it? How, how do you say it? Brahmas? Brahmas? Uh, I know there's a new team. San Antonio Brahmas. Uh, I think I'm saying it right. I'm not sure if I am saying it right. So if 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 I'm, if I'm butchering butchering the the name, I do apologize. But Brahmas uh, game, it was really great. A uh, shout out to Chris Motts. He actually uh, gave me a uh, he sent uh, gave us some tickets to go check it out. So we saw the first half and. We had a long Sunday, so we just were there, committed to the first half, and then after that, we left. So we're not sure if they won. I, I, I didn't even pay attention afterwards of the game, but it was pretty cool to see San Antonio show some love, you know, to see the Alamo Dome, you know, semi-packed for our own football team. So yeah. I, I do, I hope, uh, uh, well, I'm not say hope, I do know that they have a five-year contract, so... That's a good thing. So, yeah, chances are we might be going to a game. Yep. Uh, um, I know that the championship game is supposed to be here in San Antonio. So For the XFL? Uh-huh. Is that XFL. What it is? Okay. Yes, sir. I've been so. paying a lot of attention to, to XFL, so I'll have to catch up. You big sports fan? Sports, I, I was, you know. Uh, the past year I've kind of dialed that down. Um, I've been watching a lot of college hoops for the, okay. for the tournament. But uh, aside from that, a little NFL, but man, I, I've caught, you know, diehard Saints fan. I just watch every Saints yes, game, I see. every Saints game. But this past year, I've just really been focusing on uh, business and then family. So, but sports wise, you know, Ghost Rose, uh, big Astros fan. There you go. Love those guys. And I'm assuming that you've been to those games? A couple, yeah. Yes. Maybe. How's that? How, how's the ball game? Baseball? I, I think anything can beat baseball. You know, a lot of people, I think, don't understand the game or think it's too slow maybe it's too boring but it's you, you make an evening of it you know or a day depending on you know when the national anthem is uh but you know to go out there kick back relax an entire game there's a lot going on if you pay attention but the whole experience is you know it's american and it's fun it's great and shout out to team usa for winning the uh like world baseball classic oh really yeah i did not know that uh yeah they beat japan yesterday so there you go usa usa I, I, I'm, I'm hoping i read that right but i was <laughs> yeah, i hope so but yeah watch a little baseball but baseball's great Baseball's i've great. never been to the astros i mean yes i supported our mission games you know but missions is great too uh but a game at minute maid's a little special you know you got you know your your, your world series champions playing there mm-hmm. Uh, Houston's a great city, but Minimaid's downtown Houston, so there's plenty of things to kind of walk to um, before and after the game to to fill in that experience. But yeah, it's a beautiful stadium. It's uh, it's an open. It can be open air, but they have a retractable roof. Okay. So for nice nights, they'll pull the roof back, and uh, it's a great great time out there at Minimaid. Nice man. I need to really definitely check it out. Um, I think that's something that I really want to do is is I was talking to some friends about this. I've never been to a Dallas Cowboys game or, mm-hmm. or yeah, the state, the new stadium where it's not that new anymore, but I've never been. So yeah. I really want to go check that out too as well. Pick, pick a date you know? and, uh, you know, make things happen, put it on the calendar and then go do it. Because you and I were talking off camera uh, before we got on the podcast and we're talking, I was telling you that, you know, I, the last time I've traveled or the only time that I've ever traveled is with you or with John and, and that's many, many, many years ago. Hmm. And, and, you know, there's certain, yeah. there's certain things that I want to kind of put on, on that bucket list and check it off. Yeah, put, start putting so, it on. I think you don't have to go across the globe or yeah. across the country. There's plenty of things to do in our great state. You know, in a, in a, and also in our great city. That is so true. And surrounding areas, too. But, yeah, just travel, go experience other neighborhoods, other, you know, other people, you know, get lost a little bit. But make the date. Say, hey, we're going to go do this light itinerary. And, and yeah, push I remember that going to New Orleans with you, and I remember you had a detailed itinerary. It, it was detailed, but it was it was light. And it was I liked uh, it, though. You know, it's like we knew what we were expecting to do. Yeah, it's it's always nice to be like, oh, this is that, you know, have that kind of information mm-hmm. and and put that in front of you. But it wasn't mandatory itinerary. No, it's it just, wasn't. No, yes, that is so true. It wasn't mandatory. <laughs> but it definitely highlight some points. So yeah, do your research. Um, one thing I picked up from my brother Michael, 
he's a traveler. Okay. He's and he's like a world traveler. For oh, a while wow. for a while he was running marathons in different countries. He was all over the place. Wow. You know, he t- toured Asia, Europe. Really? Um one of his marathons he ran was on the Great Wall of China. Like if running a marathon isn't what? hard enough, he's like, "Yeah, let's run it. Let me go run it on a bunch of steps." How, how in long China. how long is is uh, like the marathons? How long is that? Like how many uh, miles a, is that? A marathon is 26.2 miles. <laughs> so, yeah. But getting back and we can talk about marathons too cuz he convinced me to start running those and that's yeah, that's Man, that's just scary to even think about. But well, my brother, he just travels, and uh, you know, there's uh, a couple trips where we planned, mm-hmm. and he's just so like, okay, we we can do this and we can do that. But he puts it all out there, so you fill up your day and you fill up your experience. Um, and we did South America, so we went for the Olympics in 2016. Really? And yeah, that's amazing. But instead of just going to Brazil, mm-hmm. uh, it's like, okay, well, we're gonna fly into Peru. And we're going to hang out in Cusco for a day or two to acclimate to the elevation before we go hike Machu Picchu. Uh, the Inca Trail was closed or it was booked up. So it was like, well, we found another route. It was the Salconte Trail. And I was like four days just trekking it. And the funny part about that story was is we went to this outfitter to book the, the hike. Okay. And they're pairing us up with these two girls like <laughs> and uh it was caitlin's birthday like a couple days ago i still keep up with them one was caitlin one was manu manu was french caitlin was i believe from like the north east up there somewhere but she's going to school in peru long story short i'm thinking like man these girls are gonna slow us down you know uh-huh. it's like you know it's, i don't know if i like this <laughs> and but it was just like we're just rolling with it and we get on this hike and like I'm the guy at the, you know, the back of the pack, just <laughs> hands on my knees, just like, and the, the, our guide, you know, it was real cool because they had like a mule driver and people, uh, you know, build your camp for you. It was primitive camping, but basically everybody's doing everything for you. Mm-hmm. But the, the the head of the, the excursion, his name was Carlos, and he was always trying to offer me oxygen. You know, he's like, you sure you don't want oxygen? <laughs> I was like, no, I'm good. But wonder, it was a wonderful trip and traveling with my brother is very unique because he's very, you know, does his research okay but he he makes those commitments so it's enough time where you can go and do stuff and get older or younger he's younger he's eight years my junior okay same as michael and uh yeah it's it's always and he's always dragging my folks places the whole family and uh it's 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 neat having him be the the journeyman of the family which his play a lot of influence i I thought i like to travel and it's I'm, i'm nowhere near his uh his level that is amazing. I think it, I think it's a it's a beautiful thing when when you have that free spirit to where you're just like I'm going to do it no matter what. I'm going to set the plan. I'm going to set the date and time, and I'm just going to go do it. And 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 you just do it. You know, there's a lot of people that give excuses. I'm guilty of it. I'm very guilty of I, it. We all are. It's and, easy. And, and, and you know, I say like I want to do it, but then I could have this same conversation with you right now. And good thing that we have it recorded. And then let's just really see the year from now how many times I've traveled. Well, thankfully, I know I have a guaranteed travel time well, this coming up weekend. Nothing's guaranteed. So, but yeah, well, yes, I, yes, I nothing. It. Yeah, but I have a plan. So it's it's a it's a it's one of those things that when I hear stories of someone like your brother to do that, that's encouraging and inspiring. It it is, and I think it's uh, you, you need that. You got to get up and you got to move around. You got to experience stuff because. You're not going to get the full view staying in one spot. So, you know, getting experience and everything like that and kind of getting right back into you. And so I met you over 10 years ago and I was uh, maybe 23. So that would be I'll be 37 this year. So 14, 14 years, 15 almost. And I remember meeting you through uh, John Vale. Okay. And, you know, you had one of the most uh, biggest personalities I've ever met <laughs> and outgoing and just, you know, uh, energy. And for those that don't know, this is one of the reasons why I got into promotions was because of John and Nick and kind of learning under them without them even realizing that I was learning from them. 
and because you opened the doors for me in restaurants yeah. and kind of handed me your well, well i invited you to, yes to, to come in yes you invited me to come in yeah yes to help out with the uh promotions at pericles shout out to russell yeah back when spurs basketball was <laughs> the dynasty <laughs> yes when spurs we had a good spurs team hopefully they'll they'll you know pick up that slack but yes it, it, you invited me to come in and i just remember you telling me one day you're just like i think i'm not gonna do this anymore here <laughs> yeah. you're like so if you want it you go ahead and have it and then it was funny because when it went from a uh, basketball i think it went into football if i'm not mistaken and i don't watch a lot of football really to be honest with you <laughs> and i remember john telling me just do it and i'll <laughs> i'll go there with you uh, when you do the football uh uh sunday ticket and then he's like just convince russell to do it and i'm just like all right cool I go to Russell to his uh, home office. He has a, a, a his office is like three different houses. I think it's like two houses and one is filled with like storage stuff, and and the other one house is he has storage and in his office and whatever. So he's telling me, looking at the computer, saying, "Do you know how much it costs to do the Sunday ticket?" And well, me, corporate account, yeah, me, me thinking like, okay, just say yes. <laughs> and just go with it. So I'm just yeah, I know how much it is. And not knowing it is a corporate, they go by the occupancy of the restaurant. Number of screens. And yes. Blah, blah, and blah. so it's like a few thousand dollars. So he's just like, is this a good investment for me? And I'm just like, yes, without knowing anything. I didn't teach Mike that. No, he didn't teach me that. But but there was the convincing from John that, that allowed me to understand it. And then I actually did really well. Like that, that promotion kicked off really well. It was just amazing. But to know, to see you and John in that environment, in the, uh, like the promotion side of things and kind of learning from you guys and just seeing what you were doing and, uh, and, and seeing it was all about building relationships and networking. And I think that's, that, that takes, you know, I, 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 I saw that a lot. So to see you go from there and then I didn't understand why you wanted to stop doing it because I was just like why does he not want to do this anymore like that it didn't make sense to me then but then it started making sense to me later on as the years came through or go by and so and I, what sense what, what sense was that or what do you feel that was uh just it, it gets uh, when I was drinking it, it was getting uh, it was, uh burned out you know you know, yeah. when you when you're drinking too, and too much fun and, and, and after parties and and everything like that. And, and that can consume your lifestyle. Yeah. And it it was burning me out so fast to where I just I felt like I need to slow down. Something had to change. Yeah, yeah I, I get that. I get and, that. and I always, you know, saw you going to the next project. You know, you're always, you know, that guy that was like, OK, I'm going to do this. OK, I've done this. All right, I'm going to go to this and do this. And I remember finding out one year that you did art and i was like i saw one of your paintings that you showed me through your phone and i was just like wow i was like you did that and you're like yeah i'm like that is amazing and i did not don't know, know that about you and then to see like what you've done even with the videos so our followers on late nights without access from facebook now we're on youtube they would see or you have seen uh, I think in COVID or the snowvid. When was the snowvid? Was that February of twenty one? So you did an incredible video of that whole. Oh yeah, that was a that was a fun. Pr and the thing about that project was it was just like I snapped and uh, I shot that and edited it like in an afternoon. Yeah, and I was just it was one of those a snow day. You know, so what are you going to go play in the snow goof <laughs> off, and just having fun? But and so we had that as our intro for a, a while. All right. Yeah. That's so so cool. people have seen it. The, the Our true followers and the people that watch the, the live podcast every week, they saw it for a while. Every week it was our intro because yeah. that was just how amazing it was. That was I've had a few pieces of video go kind of viral ish. OK. I don't know what you consider viral. You know, I mean, likes, I, views, shares. Is it quantified? You know, like, oh, it's it's only 60,000. So uh, kind of there. I woke up the next morning and I just my phone was like uh, one of those. Uh, what is it in Las Vegas? You know, the little 
slot oh, machine. slot machines. And it was a ding. I had to turn my notifications off because it was it was it was exciting. But it was it was such a unique little video. And then that's you know. You know what? I'm pretty sure and confident now that you know uh, it's popular to do reels and all that. I'm pretty sure if you put that into a reel on Facebook now because now they have Facebook reels and mm -hmm. they have the Instagram reels. I'm pretty sure you'll get paid for that. You huh. know, to where it, it monetizes. Interesting. Uh, it, it is because you, you a lot of the people that content creators that did videos back then that never got you know paid for it. You use all that old uh, 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 content and reuse it and post it as a reel. Hmm. It generates now, and you'll see that that viewership. You know, maybe, maybe in real time. You know, but it's a very beautiful uh, uh, piece of art right there. And then kind of fast forwarding to your mural to where I was just like, wow, like another hidden talent that I didn't really know. And it's just amazing to see how gifted you are. Oh, thank you very much. And, and seeing the the exposure that you're getting too as well. That's, that's neat. So how does that make you feel to see that? To, to, you know, what got you into, actually, you know what? Before, I'm going to ask you this. So we're going to take a small little break. And when we come back, you'll be able to answer this. Uh, what got you into doing some murals and, and, and art, I, you we, know? Yeah, I, we don't so, have to take a break. So you have to go pee. No, no we're going to take a small <laughs> little break. And then uh, we'll come right back uh, with everyone else. Okay? So don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back with you guys. Stay tuned. Seconds. 26 36 46 who knows but we have the one and only nick monroe wow. right here episode 202. 202 thank you again you know i before we get into the question i asked you actually had a podcast as well yeah you know and, and share a little bit about that experience uh so covid's happening you're supposed to stay in your place you know <laughs> you know we're supposed to take care of that curve what was it 15 days mm -hmm. everything would be okie dory and then two years later <laughs> was back up to like the first 15 days i thought i was like great you know this is great i loved it i was like i, I was just out oh i took full advantage of that period but you see all uh, online you saw so many people on social media and just keyboard warriors and stuff got real political and i was like you know what would be good to just let's have some people talk it out you know mm -hmm. So it was like Common Ground was the name of the uh, the podcast. And so, I mean, we had state representatives on there. We had some local teachers, administrators. We had Ann uh, Engler for, you know, education on property tax. Uh, we had SAPD come on. And it was pretty good. It was just a, a roundtable conversation. And we did six episodes. And ha hats off to you because I learned firsthand how much energy and effort goes into producing a podcast it's not thank you yeah it's if for anybody that's tried you're awesome for anybody that's continuing or has their own show even more awesome so hats off but uh yeah that's uh, i just wanted to bridge that gap i wanted to create a dialogue yeah you know because it's it's what it's, were some of the conversations it's like? different when you're behind a keyboard because it's it's there's like no consequences pretty much for whatever yeah. you can type that you is so true do. And then also you can totally take it out of context and everything can get muddled. So yeah, sitting across from someone and talking about, we're talking about systemic racism, you know, what is it? How is it portrayed? Um, you know, this was back with the whole George Floyd tragedy. 
and basically the cities were burning and it's like you know there's protests at city hall and it's good let's go find out and just talk to people and that's pretty much how it started and then i was like okay this is this is interesting and started getting some traction it's like well what else do we want to talk about so that was our starting point and then we moved into uh, free and fair elections okay um then we talked you know just topics that other people can kind of expert on to kind of give you some inside mm -hmm. opinions to walk you through uh, those topics. Yeah. So that's about it. No, it it's, it's, it's a good conversation because I think that these conversations need to be have, uh, they need to be spoken because of the fact that a lot of people need to see other people's perspectives and point of views. We're all and human. Yes, we are. And, and, and you mentioned George, George Floyd, and I think we had, uh, we had, I can't remember his name. I do apologize. We had someone that was, uh, uh, speaking about the Black Lives Matter on our podcast, uh, maybe a, a year and a half ago. And I just remember going into that conversation with an open mind because when that happened and the outrage of wanting to destroy other people's buildings for no reason here i remember to myself and this is how i i took it I, I said you know i get why everyone's mad but why do you have to destroy you know and, and i remember san antonio was really scared and i remember uh, friends of friends they were like man i'm boarding my my place of business because they're scared it's gonna get trash and they're just like i have nothing to do with that <laughs> and and i'm just like i completely understand what you're coming from and in, in hindsight of all that, though, I think a lot of those problems could be solved if you just turn off the TV, you know, yeah. or, or put your, your phone away. That is so true. I feel there are certain narratives that are pushed, you know, yeah. on no matter what spectrum you're at to influence, you know, mm -hmm. like all these platforms have different influencers, right? Yep. Instagram. But it's you got to pay attention to who's influencing what I feel. So do you on that note, do you feel that you're do you catch yourself watching a lot of media or do you feel to yourself too I, you just... I was but i had to really kind of tone it down you know shut my twitter off just because twitter's where it all goes down mm -hmm. i wasn't a, a fan of twitter i was just like a facebook guy and then twitter is like you know that was amazing and i've gotten back on recently but i limit my stuff there but yeah there's it's there's so much stuff out there and then with the algorithms and it's just they just start feeding you the same stuff that you know that you're yeah. looking for and if you talk about something, they hear your phone and your conversations and you see it on ads. <laughs> so, yeah, my, uh, you know, just, just pay attention to because uh, sometimes you got to catch yourself. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, I know everybody thinks they're right in their own mind, but a lot of times we get it wrong. And a lot of times things are just fueled on, you know, just emotion. So, yeah, you, you nailed it right there. I think it's more emotions. Yeah, you I can, think you I can think when people get someone emotionally charged, mm -hmm. I mean, the murders happen so mm -hmm. yeah that, that that see a therapist <laughs> no very true i think that that's that's correct now kind of going right back into how did you get into when did you knew that you like to draw or even paint or oh, how, how did i how was long that, is how long is this podcast uh, man just 15 more minutes I right. <laughs> we'll do a, a condensed version. A condensed version. Of... I mean, I've always liked. I'm, I think all kids have imaginations growing up. Okay. And my parents, maybe, maybe they gave me permission. Maybe they didn't. But you know, just a lot, drawing on the walls at the house. Yeah, they didn't. They were got real upset about that. But continuing that that Im imagination, I was always in high school. Like you get to pick your electives. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, what what class art class can I take? Mm -hmm. I love the ability to be able to create stuff, um, you know, whether whether it's a painting or a drawing or a video uh, or food or music, mm -hmm. you know, anything that can kind of get your senses off, uh, you know, I'm two thumbs up for. But as it pertains to me and my path right now, um, COVID's happening. COVID changed a lot. And for me, it was just kind of gave my I think gave everybody a chance to reset. Some people cleaned out their closets, you know, um, some people went on, you know, who knows, but just a nice little reset. And my, my good friend, Jonah, Jonah LaMonica, he would invite me to Midland to his, uh, his studio. 
Okay. Right? He had a home studio. It was Palladium Arts. Shout out Jonah. Um, and what he did is like, hey, dude, let's just have a creative weekend. Let's just create really cool artwork. Okay. And I was just like, dude, that sounds great. Went down there. And we're just working on stuff. And I'm buying big canvases and I'm just oil paints, you know, just all weekend, just creating stuff. And he created a piece for my dad. It was a picture of my dad and me. I, I could have been like one or two. Okay. It was a cool picture, old retro uh, sepia style picture. And that's where it started. And then from there, you know, a friend of mine, Leo, saw that. He's like, hey, man, would you, you know, paint a picture for me? And then it was, you know, but even before that, it was, I like to paint animals, mm -hmm. you know, dogs and use acrylics and stuff like that. But where it started gaining traction was with Leo. And I did a, a, a portrait for him as a gift for his wife. And that's what out. I saw. That was it. Okay. That's the one that you showed me. Okay. Yeah. That was a great one. I had fun that was with, an amazing I, one. Yeah. I had fun with that. And then from there, it's, you know, we're doing this artwork and still Jonah would come up or I'd go him and we just have these co collaborative creative weekends sometimes extended weekends too we're just creating art and he would make some really dude, he is such a talented artist I get a lot of my inspiration from him just because he's been doing it for such a while mm. and so you know, uh, what is it the best form of flattery is intimidation or impersonation or I don't know how that quote goes but anyway I'm, I'm looking at my friend I'm like dude that was just so awesome do am I talented enough to do that? Can I just let all this go and just focus on that? So I was like, maybe, maybe not. Fast forward a couple months, he's got a mural project. He's like, hey, come, let's let's paint this paint this mural with me. So we painted a mural in Midland, Texas, on a Shipley Donuts, and that was just a blast. It was big, <laughs> big mural. I had the scissor lifts, a bunch of spray spray paint, and we're just taking a big, huge blank wall and just filling it with color. Wow. And it was fun. And then uh, I was like, dude, we got to do this again. So found a wall uh, off of Pressa here in San Antonio mm -hmm. with my cousin's shop and had to do some arm twisting to let him allow me to paint on it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's been, it was getting hit with graffiti and, you know, so let's put some art. And you just, that was the, the breaking moment for me. Okay. Was just the community outreach in that neighborhood. And my brother Michael came down and helped out because it's a pretty big size wall, probably about 12, 1300 square feet. Oh, wow. So, yeah, and this was all scaffolding and ladders too. So that was, we're working for this one. Mm -hmm. um, but the community, just people stopping by, the engagement there was just nothing that I'd ever seen or felt. Oh, wow. And the feel part was what got me because it was just like this feeling. It just charged me. I was just, all I could think about was like, I want to go paint more, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's that's where I got it. And then I would after I'm done painting, then I you know talk call or talk to Jonah, and we just talk about painting, and it was just a really neat experience. And then from there, other opportunities have opened up. That's amazing. That is. Now, how did you come up with the company name? Uh, Scribeworks. Yes, yeah, Scribeworks. Yeah, that's not easy. You know, uh, just I don't know how we came up with it. I think I was asking friends, was like, hey, what'd be a cool name? Cause there's so many names out there and then there's so many names that are taken, but I don't know. It was just something that just scribe, scribe. is to draw, you know, to draw. Okay. It seems like ancient, but it also okay. has relevance to today. Okay. And then works, you know, just pieces of art, but we got work spelled with an E. Why is that? I don't know. It's more, more of a, a slang type of works. Okay. You know, I think urban dictionary has it like more, uh, a modern style of, create creativity love it i love mm -hmm. it uh, so and then now fast forward you're doing another huge project here at alamo business company yeah yeah so so talk about that mural right now and and it's while you're talking about it we're gonna reshow the the photos and oh, everything okay like that's that, really so. nice thank you for that um john vale i've known john for since college you know we'd promoted and had paper napkin productions back uh, legends over here back <laughs> in college and <laughs> we've always remained close and sometimes it's you know one of those friends you haven't seen in a while but we always pick up where we take off yeah. but recently he's you know been paying attention to some of the murals that we've been doing and we did one recently over uh on rector for my buddy phil he's got a gym over there and john came in and he's just like yeah he's like i need one of these mm-hmm you know, he's, and I was like, okay, let's, 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 let's talk about it. <laughs> so it's about 1300 square feet of corrugated metal. 
and we just we we had somewhat of a concept but we didn't have the artwork so i spent a couple of weeks doing renders and shooting it over to john and john's just like i don't like it you know john john knows what he doesn't like which is a good thing yeah um but it took some time to to get the artwork done and the render done and then once we got that and the green light then you know you procure your your paint and, and supplies and manpower uh so it's not just me that's been out there painting there's been a lot of people showing yes. up yes and lending hands and, and experience. you want to give them shout outs yeah uh my brother came up so michael another shout out for you um john b if you're watching appreciate the help john now john b was another artist that came by another mural saw it and was like hey if you had another project and so mm -hmm. it's been nice for him to come up very talented artist uh, albert's been helping out we've also had a lot of sh kids come up you know just okay kids so, there you go and this is where i'm just like like this tickles me because it's they're so curious about it mm -hmm. and kids from probably like three years old to mm. um the uh, grace she's in high school you know and but her mom would come and drop her off for a couple hours and she'd paint or tape or we'll find something for him to do to just kind of no, be a yes. part of it and so big shout out to them but the kids were cool too i mean we'd, we'd pull a trash can out and just let them go to town on that um <laughs> Uh, one of my sister's friends came by with her daughter and she must have painted for like hours, six hours. It was great. And, you know, my partner Jonah would take her up on the scissor lift and it was just such wow. a neat experience that day to be able to maybe create, you know, something through them, you know, or charge them up and get them all excited. And because the imagination is wonderful. You know, it's, um, I think creativity or art in a sense is the application of the imagination and as long as you still can mm -hmm. imagine stuff and then just try to to create it, it don't have to be good or bad you're just in that moment i think that's really neat and to be able to stir that up with the kiddos that's pretty dynamite so uh, that's happening um you know a bunch of other people you know would come in mike lasoya stopped by for a little bit several people stopped by um, my friend ann stopped by and dropped off uh, all sorts of stuff like king's cake and food and a lot of people just what do you people need? are loving it and the media actually picked up on it too as well yeah that's exciting so to see an article you know mm -hmm. a few of them and, and, a publication is always nice it's always nice mm -hmm. and you know so in the process you all have to realize that what he's painting on is not a smooth wall it, it's metal well, it's medical but the, the trick is and, it's, and it's, it's like, corrugated like it's not smooth so there's how do you say it? Layers or, or Crev crevasses? I, I really like don't know. So it yeah, dimples in the, the the surface area is warped. So. so how do you how do you manage to to get that render like to like how like that's just amazing. It's just it's really amazing. It's a talent, an eye that only you know you and and people that are uh, into this. I'm I'm in a it's just a field of amazing. very very talented people here like san antonio across the world to know that like for me i would have to have i mean i love to draw don't get me wrong i used to be really good at drawing back in the day but i haven't painted or picked up a pencil to draw in years so i couldn't imagine myself getting a wall and then say i'm gonna draw a, a lot of stuff uh, uh, to be honest it's like you you plan and you prepare as best yeah. you can because stuff happens and mm -hmm. it's, you always want to stay ahead of that but stuff always goes wrong i mean like in all the project there are things that you can't account for like the weather or like this corrugation with the wind um that has been challenging um but i mean you grow when you're challenged right you don't want to do the you know you want to you want to try for something a little bit a little bit more where it's not it's that sweet spot you know it's not out of your range mm -hmm. but it's not like you know okay this is i want to be excited and i want to try to excite people yeah so you gotta it find is that. exciting because mm -hmm. i see people driving and they're stopping to see what y'all are doing out there and that's taking a, pictures yeah that's a that's a really neat feeling when people you can i like to candidly you know watch people just you know appreciate maybe or admire admire or look. it's yeah. really admiring mm -hmm. it really is and that's a, that's kind of neat that's really neat so but do you feel like for you to do a project like this, as big as it is, do you kind of get nervous sometimes that, that, you know, that it may not come out the way that it looks like on the renders or, or you just know like, hey, 
I can do this. And yeah, like, you got to stay, you know, like Arnold Schwarzenegger's like, you know, plan B is dead weight. Okay. You know, so it's like, you know, plan A and work it that way. And yeah, tackle it and go. But yeah, the challenges are there, you know, and some days are frustrating and some days are not. And um, we did a podcast probably about two weeks ago uh, with a couple gentlemen and um, it was there, we were out there painting and it was so cold and we had the heaters out and we had these <laughs> other heaters on the paint. And it was right at that point where it's just like, we're about to call it and they're just, Hey, we're going to come and set up and do a podcast. And we're just like, all right. But in that podcast, Jonah was made a, a comment and I was just like, it stuck with me that day. It was just like, he's like my worst day out here, you know, painting on a wall is like better than any day that I would have doing work or a job that I don't want to be at mm. my best day there. And I was just like, man, that that's a good point. And so whenever, you know, you get frustrated, you get those challenges, you just, just remember what you're doing and, um, and work through it. But yeah. That's about it. So if, so if someone is getting into, someone's watching this and, and they're thinking about, you know, doing art, what would be some encouraging words for them? Um, don't measure your success not by what you're turning out or how much money you're making measure it and quantify it by how much time you're doing what you enjoy to do right i love that so as long as you're engaged i mean things are going to happen and as long as you stick with it and put in the work I mean, what's better than that? Now, are you looking for extra help, maybe volunteers and stuff like that? Always. Or for projects, oh. and how could they uh, reach out uh, to you? How, how would they get in contact with oh, you? Oh, okay. So we just started a, uh, an Instagram for the mural work, um, and that's mural work between uh, Jonah and myself. So it's a collaboration with Palladium Arts, and it's on Instagram, and okay. it's uh, Scribeworks. Scribeworks, okay. So it's S-C-R-I-B-E works with an E. Yes. W E R K S. And you can message there and uh yeah, we'll get back to you. Or you know, we will get back to you, yeah. That's sure. awesome. And what's the uh, what's uh, the next project after this when is it done? And what's the ante anticipation date or, or or what's the Well, uh it's cold face supposed to come in on Thursday. Okay. It's supposed forty percent chance to rain on Friday. Okay. Um I'm just looking for great days to paint. But we're installing a sculpture um here this weekend. Uh, knock on wood, and we got some touching up to do outside. And of this it's going to be an interactive mural, right? Uh, interactive, yeah. So we'll actually be putting a bicycle out there. So you know, some places or venues have those big old chairs where okay. everybody can kind of yes. go and take a photo. So we're getting creative with that bicycle. So you have to there come. You, and, go. you have to come and check it out. Yes, y'all really do have to come check it out. And, and again, you know, this podcast is going to be up on our YouTube channel as it is right now, and it's going to be. Uh, available to anybody to watch it you know especially if they missed out tonight i know that we were supposed to come on last night but we had you know some things that occurred that was out of our hands and this is the reason why we're here tonight yeah. and we appreciate you being here now once again nick uh if they needed to follow you besides uh, the scribe works is there any personal uh pages like facebook instagram TikTok, uh, numbers that you um, want to share i have a website okay so there it's, you go. Uh, nicholas monroe dot art N I C H O L A S M O N R O E dot A R T. Uh, and then my personal Instagram is Nicholas, and it's spelled really funny, artistically, or artisan funny. Uh, it's N 1 C H O 1 A 5. So I noticed looks, that. Looks like Nicholas, but we've got some numbers in there. So. Yeah, I noticed that. That's that's really unique, thinking yeah. outside the box. Yeah. So uh, add, artistic. Add, add me on those accounts or reach out to me on those accounts. My All my other contact information will be listed on the website. Um, or if you have any questions or you just want to come by and check it out, uh, love to have you. No, we appreciate you, man. We do. And uh, uh, besides the weather being kind of up in the air at this moment, what do you have plans for this weekend? Paint. Paint. Sculpt. Paint, paint, and paint. Ain't that glorious? That yeah. is. So. You know, it's amazing. I appreciate you being as our special guest, not, you know, just because, but it's really admiring to see what you're doing out there. And I've seen your other artwork because, you know, I popped in at the gym, you know, with John and it just it's mind blowing, man. It's just like how people are very talented to do stuff like that. It's just mind blowing. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, it's our duty to 
uh, inspire other people. So, you know, bring them along for the ride or charge them in their paths and pump them up. So, you know, I know you do that on the, the, the reoccurring. So t- <laughs> hat, hat tips Thank to you. you on that, but Thank anybody you. out there that's that. listening, um, yeah, let's, you know, pump people up with their passionate areas, you know, and get them moving over there. People no, are, you that, know, are that, stuck or if they're, you know, just, yeah, get them, get them back on track. Remind, no, that, remind them what they enjoy. That is so true because I think you nailed it when you said your partner, you know, about how he feels on his worst days. And it's just one of those things is that you have a passion. Y'all are doing something that y'all love doing and it's, it's coming along. It really is. And you know, you, at the end of the day, you're on your time and you control your time and, and you're able to say, Hey, you know what? I still come back to this compared to being somewhere that you're not happy at. So it's very, follow your passion is, is a very key. Yeah. Definitely. Or, or make some, make some adjustments so you can, you know, get some of that time in. Absolutely. And you book know. that, book, book those trips. Yes. Book those trips. You know, this week I, I will be gone. I leave tomorrow night. So oh, I'll leave tomorrow man. night going to Galveston and going to go visit my brother, stay with him tomorrow night, Thursday, early morning. We will be, uh, getting on the cruise Setting and going sail. to Ooh-wee. Cozumel. So I'm excited. It's my first time going go on a cruise, taking my family. So Melinda, her kids, my bonus kids and their girlfriends. And it's just amazing to see us do this all together. So Say good. some prayers. Uh, I, I, I want to come back. <laughs> I'm back. kind of like nervous because I had someone the other day, they rolled up this little piece of paper and they put it right there and then they moved their hand and they said, now that's the ship and this is all water. And I was like, all you'll be, right, you'll be just fine, man. <laughs> and, and uh, but <laughs> it, it's all good because I, I I'm excited and I do want to travel more. So this is a hopefully this is not going to be the first and challenge, last one. And, and it is a challenge. It really is. Uh, but for those that uh, are uh, watching, please make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. Go subscribe official all access podcast you can follow me on facebook and instagram official mike anthony uh, my co-host nat boogie is her birthday once again shout out to her happy birthday nat boogie our other two co-hosts taryn and natasha weren't able to be here but again we'll be here next monday night so make sure to tune in at 10 p.m and then we'll also go ahead and talk about our special guests that are coming into april and once again thank you so much for being here i appreciate you love you brother and everyone that's tuning in thank you so much for watching we'll see you next week monday at 10 p.m